Our observable universe contains trillions of galaxies, each hosting hundreds of billions of stars. These stars come in many different forms. Some are hot and blue in colour, others are colder and redder. We can detect young new protostars forming from nebulae as well as the dead remnants of gigantic stars such as black holes. Yet, while we as a species have millions of telescopes and detectors constantly positioned towards the sky, there is one elusive object which the sighting hasn't been confirmed and has evaded astronomers for decades. So in this video, I'm going to talk through the details and scientific consensus of the peculiar and fascinating prospect of quark stars and hopefully teach you about these mysterious and not often spoke about celestial remnants. Firstly, we need to discuss the life cycle of stars and what leads up to the point where quark stars form. This area still has new research and makes new discoveries each year, and so can be very complicated. But put simply, stars form when a cloud of hydrogen gas in otherwise empty space compresses under its own gravity. Eventually, the pressure in the cloud is high enough that the gas ignites and nuclear fusion occurs. Fusion is the power source of stars and involves combining lighter elements into heavier ones which releases energy. The main fuel of stars is hydrogen. The outward pressure of stars generated from fusion is able to balance the inward gravitational force and the star remains in hydrostatic equilibrium throughout the main sequence of its life. But once hydrogen begins to run low and the star can no longer support its weight is when things become really interesting. The death of stars begins with them combining heavier elements such as helium, carbon, oxygen and silicon together in shells eventually producing iron. The fuel for these processes is far less abundant than the original hydrogen fuel supply and so happen over shorter time periods. For example, stars will only burn silicon for about a day before the core collapses, compared to the millions of years they'll burn hydrogen for. Stars will also puff up and expand when they begin to die, and grow up to many times their size. Our own sun is about halfway through its life cycle, but when it swells up it will engulf the Earth. This is known as the red giant phase, and for small to average sized stars like the sun, they will then eject their outer layers, leaving behind a hot core known as a white dwarf. For these stars, the story ends there, as they slowly cool over the rest of eternity. Massive stars are far more interesting, and lead to the focus of today's video. When a massive star dies, it will erupt in a violent explosion called a supernova. The power output during a supernova will be as much, if not more, than the entire output of the star during its main sequence phase. What's left behind afterwards was typically thought to be one of two things. Either a neutron star, or a black hole if the star was particularly massive. However, there may be a third, very unlikely, but still possible option, a quark star. Quark stars are thought to arise under very specific conditions. One in particular is that they have a mass just right that much lighter they would have formed a neutron star, and much heavier they would collapse into a black hole. Now let's talk about the key forces at play in each of these objects, which is really where things get bizarre in quark stars. Neutron stars are really dense objects. Like a teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh thousands of tons here on Earth. They're so dense that even the electrons and protons of atoms are smashed into each other, creating almost nothing but neutrons. It's neutron degeneracy pressure which is keeping the object standing. Neutron degeneracy pressure is the neutrons in the material resisting being pushed together. The object is so dense that the neutrons are being forced together, and it's their nuclear force which resists it. This force originates from the Pauli exclusion principle, which essentially prevents fermions, such as electrons and neutrons, from being in the same quantum state. In our case, this principle is preventing neutrons from being inside each other in the same place, as this would violate the laws of quantum mechanics. Honestly, this phenomenon is really strange and a neat quirk of quantum mechanics, and is fundamentally what is preventing the collapse into a black hole. Interestingly, white dwarfs which I mentioned earlier use electron degeneracy pressure to hold themselves up. This is similar to the neutron degeneracy, but involves the electrons of the material resisting being in the same state. This works really well for low mass stars below the Chandrasekhar limit of around 1.4 solar masses. Above this limit, electron degeneracy pressure fails and cannot prevent further collapse. Neutron degeneracy pressure is only able to hold an object up if it's at least 10 solar masses. Just think about that for a moment. Typical neutron stars are even smaller than the Earth, yet they have to be at least 10 times heavier than the Sun, which is millions of times heavier than Earth for comparison. These objects are already so spectacular and exist in such extreme conditions, and the theory surrounding them is about to get even more exotic. Neutron stars can reach masses up to around 25 times that of the Sun before neutron degeneracy pressure fails to balance the inward gravitational force, and the object collapses into a black hole. At least, that's what we thought. This is where quark stars are hypothesized as an object which is denser than a neutron star, but still isn't able to collapse into a black hole due to the quarks themselves resisting being smashed together. For those of you who don't know, quarks are fundamental particles which make up nucleons such as protons and neutrons. Neutrons are made up of three quarks, and so it's thought when neutron degeneracy pressure fails, the material forms a sort of free quark soup. This degenerate matter is then held up by the quarks themselves and contains no ordinary matter like neutrons. 
This is of particular interest, as typically quarks never exist on their own. They are always seen in a group of three which makes up a baryon, such as a proton or a neutron, or in a quark-antiquark -quark pair like with mesons. But free quarks aren't thought to occur anywhere else in nature, if quark stars even exist at all. Degenerate quark matter like this cannot be replicated in a lab at this point either, and even if we could, it would most likely disintegrate quickly and evaporate, making it almost impossible to study directly. Yet, quark stars are theorised to exist by many scientists and have been since 1965. Another issue with quark stars is detection. It's all well and good hypothesising them, but we have yet to detect one. This could be down to we don't know what we're looking for. As previously mentioned, we don't know the properties of quark matter and we cannot replicate it in a lab. Often celestial objects have specific characteristics which we can use as a sort of calling card to know what we're looking at. For example, many neutron stars emit radio waves and active galactic nuclei release jet streams of radiation. Quark stars could do something unique and specific like this too, but we don't know what, which makes detecting them tough. We can't possibly test and attempt to observe every possible signal from outer space. Quark stars will also be really tiny, even smaller than neutron stars due to how dense they are, which makes them even more insignificant specks on our telescopes and detectors and thus harder to find. Although there is still hope. It's possible that quark stars are similar to neutron stars in the way that they still have neutron material but a degenerate quark matter core. This would make them look like neutron stars on the outside, but be hiding quark matter within. There have been many neutron stars which have been observed to have masses heavier than what's allowed for a neutron star, but hasn't collapsed into a black hole. Could one of these stars secretly be a quark star with a neutron shell? Obviously, the conditions have to be just right for a quark star to form, but with the countably infinite number of stars in the observable universe, like I alluded to in the intro, you'd like to think that if they did exist, we would be able to find one. Some scientists have also gone on to suggest that some quark stars may be what's known as strange quark stars. This is essentially where the unstable collection of quark matter consisting of lots of up quarks and down quarks gets transformed into strange quarks. Strange quarks are another type of quark and are heavier than the typical up and down varieties. It's thought that this strange quark degenerate matter could be stable and thus prevent collapse of the star while also not disintegrating from within. These are a subgroup known as strange quark stars, and it's thought that provided they're stable, there could be old primordial strange quark stars from the Big Bang, which are still existent today. So yes, while no direct and confirmed observations of quark stars have been made, they could nonetheless be possible. Scientists have candidates for quark stars, such as RxJ18565-3754 and 3C58. Those names really roll off the tongue. And also Assassin15LH which is thought to be a newly born strange quark star. But as you can imagine, this is leading edge astrophysics and observations of these stars is taking place every day. So who knows, perhaps we will observe a quark star in the future, or perhaps our models will change and their inexistence will be confirmed. Either way, science and physics in general will have to shift and change to a new reality. Still, the mystery of quark stars has yet to be solved and needs further investigation from future astrophysicists. There's so much more to unpack and discuss here that I could talk about for hours. However, I like to keep my videos somewhat short and fast paced, so I suggest doing your own further research into the exact mechanics of quark stars if you're hungry for more. If this video does well, then I'm down to make a follow-up video in greater depth. People who have watched my channel previously may have noticed a change. To popular suggestions, I've bought a microphone to record my videos with. I hope that the audio quality is better for you guys compared to my first 10 videos. So thank you for the comments suggesting I make this improvement. I do read comments and I'm open to fair suggestions. Whilst I'm at it, I'd also like to say thank you for 2,000 subscribers. That's double what I needed to get monetized, so I'm completely grateful to all of you who subbed and allow me to earn money from making these videos. If you made it this far and enjoyed the video and you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Only a very small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. It's free, it helps out my channel a bunch, and you can always change your mind. So with all that said and done, I thank you for watching this short astrophysics video.